New York, we're getting set for the second game on a doubleheader day of college basketball here on NBC. You have already seen Louisville come back and win decisively over Houston in the second half. We want to get to a major upset that has already occurred today. Florida State came in against fourth-ranked Memphis State with the worst record in the Metro Conference at 1-8. And, and the key man today was Pee Wee Barber. Two of his 27 points right there. The Seminoles at that point up by seven. Back came Memphis State. Less than a minute to play. Baskerville Holmes, who was in foul trouble most of the second half, will hit a key basket. He was fouled. He made the foul shot, and that tied the game at 80. Here is how it ended. You see the clock. Barber will take the shot. He'll throw up an air ball. Tad Hunter grabs the rebound. He puts it in. Florida State stuns the number four team in the country by a score of 82 to 80. One other final we want to pass along to you, also in the Metro Conference, Southern Mississippi over Virginia Tech, 69 to 66. Southern Mississippi led by as many as 12 points in the game. A mad scramble for the basketball right here. Casey Fisher comes up with it. He'll pass off to John White, who hits the jumper in the corner. Southern Mississippi led 25 to 15 at that point. Virginia Tech fought back. They took the lead in the second half. Off the steal, Del Curry, the fine guard, goes the length of the floor. He misses the, the shot, but he gets his own rebound and puts it in. 47-41, Virginia Tech. 30 seconds left. Virginia Tech leading by one. Ron Siller will make the inside jumper for the game winner. And Virginia Tech wins by a score of 69 to 66. And we want to make a correction tomorrow. You're going to see North Carolina and North Carolina State. Now, the soap opera is uh, on NBC. The soap opera is continuing in the pole vault between Sergey Bupka and Billy Olsen. Bupka last night, of course, set a world record in the pole vault indoors, going 19-5 and three quarters. He threatened to sit out a meet today in San Diego. That in retaliation for Olsen missing a meet last week. But according to a meet director down there, Bupka will be there, and it will be yet another Olsen-Bupka battle in the pole vault, where things have been mighty interesting for the past two months. We're set now for college basketball. Today in Chicago, the Super Bowl city, St. John's, number six in the nation, brings us super talent. Number 21, Walter Berry in the NCAA top ten in both scoring and rebounding. That's the truth. Walter Berry, he's led surprising St. John's to a 25-3 and record, fueled hopes of a repeat of last year's Final Four showing. Berry, strong, inventive, the chief of the St. John's Redmen, who meet disappointing DePaul today. Coach Joey Myers' demons are 14-10, and an upset today is a must if the men of Meyer are to entertain hopes of being invited to the NCAA tournament party. NBC Sports, proud to be college basketball's first network. Today, it's the St. John's Redmen versus the Blue Demons of DePaul. Brought to you by Lowenbrow, brewed in the great beer drinking countries of the world. This world calls for Lowenbrow. By the U.S. Army, a place to be all you can be. By Sears, come celebrate Sears' 100th anniversary. See all the ways we've changed and all the ways we haven't. And by Honda, who invites you to see the Civic CRXSI at your local Honda dealer. This is Dick Enberg with Al McGuire at the Rosemont Horizon. DePaul meets St. John's. He's not a national hero, but every year, thousands of people turn to him for protection. He's an independent insurance agent who rides with the Kemper Cavalry. He knows insurance. His job is to scout out the best values for your auto, home, life, health, or business. And when the chips are down, he's a good man to have on your side. Once you compare Kemper, you'll ride with us. All the right parts in all the right places. Napa puts the smiles on American faces. Napa means auto parts. So dependable, they may be the best part of your car. More than 100,000 parts for import and domestic vehicles are available through over 6,500 Napa stores all across the country. Or get Napa quality at garages and service outlets where you see the Napa sign. Wherever you go, Napa's the one. All the right parts in all the right places. I had to try this to believe it. Denerex tingles. Tells me it's doing more. Sell some blue, no tingle. Both have dandruff medicine, but Denerex adds an extra anti-itch medicine many dermatologists recommend. So long, Sell some blue. Hello, Denerex. Now you can relieve and flame hemorrhoidal tissue with the oxygen action of Preparation H. It accelerates absorption of pure oxygen to help shrink swelling of inflamed hemorrhoidal tissue. 
as it often relieves pain and itch for hours. Preparation H with oxygen action. Once guys try the 24-hour protection of Old Spice Solid, they may give up their usual antiperspirant mid-stick. Your dad, mm, only used twice. Very short strokes. Fact is, none of these solid antiperspirants help stop wetness as well as Old Spice Solid. These deodorant sprays can't block odor better than Old Spice Stick. So switch now. Sarge, for you. Hardly used. Kind of like your comb. <laughs> switch to 24-hour Old Spice, antiperspirant or deodorant. Homecoming weekend for DePaul University and 14,000 expected at the Rosemont Horizon. Blue Demons host number six ranked Red Men of St. John's. Hello, everyone. Dick Enberg with Al McGuire. Louis Carnesecca. Last year, he wins 31. 25 wins this year. What a surprising club it's been. Unbelievable, Dick. They lose Chris, plus they lost four of their starting six. I would had to pick a coach of the year, a surprise coach, it'd be little Louie. All right, it hasn't been so surprising. It's been disappointing for Joey Meyer here, replacing his father, Ray Meyer, second year with the Blue Demons. They may not get into the tournament. I think they can get into the tournament. They got to win three to the next four or four to the next four to get in. The season is not over yet. What they got to do today, they got to score from the outside. Everyone's packing underneath on them. Okay, Walter Berry, of course, at the other end, the All-American for St. John's. How do they stop him? Pray. <laughs> St. John's Redmen, they're a slight favorite here against the Blue Demons of DePaul. We'll have the starting lineups in just a moment. This world calls for special feelings. Brewed in Munich, brewed in England, Sweden, Canada, Japan, and here in America. For 600 years of Bavarian heritage in one smooth American beer. Sheldon Jones, Willie Glass on the front line with the All-America Walter Berry leading candidate for the John Wooden Award. Mark Jackson, Ron Rowan has been a terrific surprise for the senior after two years at Notre Dame. Louis Carnesecca, the winningest coach in St. John's history. The little Italian leprechaun, 61 years of age and only four wins from 400 at St. John's. For the Blue Demons of DePaul, and it's a new-look lineup for Joey Meyer. He'll have Dallas Comagee as the leading scorer. Freshman Terrence Green is really a guard move to a forward spot. Marty Embry, the leading rebounder. Rod Strickland, outstanding freshman guard. Andy Lauchs, who is considered the best perimeter shooter. And uh, appropriate to your comments, Al McGuire, Joey Meyer said we've got to get somebody that can hit from the outside. If St. John's is going to settle back in, the sloughing man-to-man probably to start, and to get a lead, they'll slough off in a tight zone. We call it a post stamp zone. So the ball has to hit from the outside. They got to get the adrenaline going there. The Dalvers are kind of down. Watch them in practice yesterday. It seemed like it was uh, everything was in slow motion. 36 year old boyish uh, Joey Meyer. There's the Big East standings. This has no impact, of course. Syracuse leading St. John's by that half game. Syracuse winning at home against the Redmen. Georgetown and Villanova, those four teams figure to have locks on an NCAA tournament berth. Earlier in the year, Dick, everyone thought that Pittsburgh would be one of the top three teams in the Big East. A lot of people picked St. John's for fourth or fifth. Boba Bradley and Higgins, the men in the striped shirts. St. John's in bright red uniforms, DePaul and home white. The tip earned by 
St. John's, Sheldon Jones off to number 13, Mark Jackson. The man with the ball leads the entire nation in assists. Barry, hitting and scoring. Not a bad move to open the play. Ember, you can't call him that close on the high post. You clean your clock. Brad Strickland. Terrence Green and a lobs. So it's a three-guard offense for Saint or for a DePaul to start. Strickland ties it up. Rod Strickland. That right. was a confidence builder, Dick. I guess that's the way things have been going for DePaul. When they score early and build their confidence, relax, they've been fine. But when down, they've tended to let that chin drop a bit. Foul is on Embry of DePaul. Watch Walter. He has jets in his shoes. Watch how quick he turns on Embry. Go on, fellas. See you later. Tied it to all. Rowan, Jackson, inside. Knocked away, but it goes right to Willie Glass, and it's very rejected by Kamaji. Surprisingly, Dick, one move by Walter Ferry, the ball was into his own. No more man-to-man. Kamaji's pass the great George Mike in all time in DePaul history and blocks this year has another year to go. Dallas Kamaji should be close to a Walter Ferry. DePaul personal 13. Watch how quick Green. Dallas gets off his feet. Pittsburgh, right. the team second. What up, Dallas? For the Redmond, 31, Shelton Jones. Oh, line. Terrence Green is first and at the line. For St. John's is Shelton Jones, a sophomore from Amityville, New York. It's a good free throw shooting team, St. John's. They're hitting nearly 75%. In contrast to DePaul, miserable at the line, just over 60%. A lot of the foul shots the ball misses are the front ends of 1-1. Just underway, 4-2. The visitors from St. John's. Watch the weak side of the court. St. John's float into the paint from the weak side. Inside to Kamaji. Ties it up at 4. Dallas has the ability... Maybe today he'll show it. Jackson setting up Willie Glass. Not there. Embry with a rebound. He's averaging over seven a game. DePaul looking for its first lead. Through the hands of Comedies to Jones. They've been committing an average of 18 turnovers a game, DePaul. That's been part of their problem, and there's the foul against Kamaji. His first. The DePaul common foul, 35, Dallas Kamaji. A couple of upsets already today. Houston, as you saw earlier, beating Louisville 76-59, and Florida State 82, Memphis State 80, a final. 2-3 zone. Watch Rowan and shoot from the outside. Glass from the outside, and it's four. Glass has improved his outside shooting. That was blocking last year, but didn't see the ball that often last year with Chris Mulling and Weddington. Inside, a push-off on Walter Berry. Barry a junior, but most everyone is figuring that this will be his last year at St. John's. A marvelous talent, and the word is that he'll go hardship. That, of course, not substantiated. It would be a surprise if he doesn't. Out of bounds, last touch by DePaul. Blue Demons have to learn to protect the ball. They're playing hesitantly. They're thinking too much, I believe. You never liked teams that thought too much, did you? No, nope, I thought they had to do things naturally. Get to the ball of the game. You see a ball player play in the blacktop of playground, then you see a great player. Because they're relaxed. So, Shelton Jones over Kamachis. Rebound Embry. Strickland brings it in. Rebound Embry. Tied at six. 
He did not leave his feet that time. He went up on his toes. Three minutes, 15 seconds gone. Tied at six. Berry. And he's fouled by Embry, and that'll be the second on Embry. They're trying to keep Berry off the ball, so watch they box him out here at the shots taken. Watch Embry stay right with a lot of pushing and shoving. For the ball, 34, Kevin Napole enters the lineup. Now box him out, Embry. Get in front of him. There he is. Embry's a space eater. He's around 6'8", but size of his body makes him about 6'11". Well, he's eating space on the bench now with two fouls. 34, Kevin Holmes, a 6'8 leaper from Los Angeles again. Barry is hitting just under 70% from the line, but averaging over 22, averaging 11 rebounds a game, both in the top 10 in the nation. He has a chance to be the first person in the Big East to lead in rebounds and scoring. A ball with the ball down by one. Double stack. Amici's inside to Holmes. And he all leads for the first time, eight to seven. Watch how far Kamajis plays off Jones. Watch Kamajis in the middle of the paint. He will not go out with Jones. See Jones out there by himself? Laying way off the double team on Barry. And Sheldon Jones makes them pay for it. 9-8. And that solves that puzzle. <laughs> a couple outside shots, he has to come out. You can't lay off Shelton Jones. He's too good of a shooter. That's why they're 25-3. and three. They're only nine men on the roster, but boy, that starting five, they all can play. Way off the mark. Comagies, here comes Barry. Loses it to Strickland, no one at the other end, except Terrence Green. With those two guards, Strickland and Green, the ball should be able to rebuild to the power they were two years ago. Barry. Oh, 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 oh. Everything unorthodox. Drops his head down, off balance. Everything with the left hand. We you talk about not thinking too much, he says, I don't even know how I do it. <laughs> I just put the ball in the hole, like Willie May saying, hey, I see the ball and I hit it. It's a simple game. Yep. Benjamin Franklin, state championship in high school. Tense Gentle Senior Junior College, they won the national championship. Stolen away, Ron Rowan the other way. Mark Jackson scores, and it's 13 to 10. St. John's fans thought he charged. St. John's setting up a trap. Five and a half minutes into the first half. Another steal. That's that turnover problem of DePaul. Mark Jackson to Ron Rowan. And he's in the field goal. All the starters have scored for Louis Carnesecca. And it's 15 10 with nearly six minutes gone. Gotta be careful here, Joe. You're fooling with the game right now. You need a basket. They're in a 1 3 1 trap. Another ah! steal. Should have called a timeout that last time, Joey. So you, gotta, you gotta call it. Should have called it last time. Unanswered points for the visitors from St. John's. And with just over six minutes gone, the Redmen lead by seven. How did you like the lobster, Mr. District Attorney? Dad, I'm an assistant to an assistant. You know, I never told you this. I told your mother how I felt when you decided not to join the old man's firm. I knew. Did you know I'm proud of you? American Express card, eh? Yeah. Pay's getting better over at City Hall. Apply for the card now. <laughs> it's part of a lot of interesting lives. Change. It's part of doing business. Now there's a wants line that keeps up with change. It automatically adjusts to give you our maximum savings on every call. And that's guaranteed. Just like change. Advanced Watts from GTE Sprint. When you've got Sprint, you've got the future on the line. 
I'm as busy after school as I am in school. I've got football practice, jazz band rehearsal. I barely have time to get hungry, but I do. Snickers satisfies you. That's when I grab a Snickers bar. It satisfies me. And then I can give everything my best. Packed with peanuts, peanut butter nougat, caramel, and milk chocolate. Mm. Snickers satisfies you. Packed with peanuts, Snickers really satisfies. When the Snickers is gone, my hunger is gone. It's a great snack. All the excitement of college basketball is here when the Tar Heels of North Carolina battle NC State. College basketball, it's the stuff Sundays are made of on NBC. He was not our informant, but we understand there was an error in the score of our earlier game. Louisville wins at Houston 76-59. Joey Meyer hungry for an upset against... St. John's today, but his team trails early by seven, and Tony Jackson, number 20 with the ball, has gone in for Andy Laux. This is not a trapping zone. They're keeping their two base linemen on the baseline. Jackson should pump there. He has a shot. Strickland got out there. Rebound Rowan. Mark Jackson. Glass. And Barry touched it last for St. John. Need a basket to fall. Let's analyze this to fall. You got three guards out there taking Jackson in. You got to shoot from the outside. You got to get some rebounding out of home. Inside to Comagees. He almost threw it away. The ball already has committed five turnovers. Almost another, uh, Jolton Jones, that picks it out of bounds. No room inside for those passes, hit from the outside. Jackson had a great reputation of a high school in San Francisco. But he's not had a good shooting year this season, Al. He's hitting only 41%. Strickland, not there. Rowan is. Two on two. Tony Jackson with a steal and a foul on Rowan. The first on Ron Rowan. Everywhere you go, everyone says, Ron Rowan, I can't believe what he's done for St. John's. Unbelievable shooting. He doesn't shoot off the dribble, but against zones, he's tough. Does a nice job and assist, too. Way outside, Terrence Green. Green, an all-state football star at Flint, Michigan. Came here to concentrate on basketball. 17-12. Seven and a half minutes have been played. Strickland deflects out of bounds. Shelton Jones setting up Barry. Tied up by Tony Jackson. The arrow is pointing toward DePaul. Boy, Shelton Jones passed up an eight-footer to get it to Barry. Green hit the last one. Take another one, Green. No, you're trying to force it in there. It's not there, fella. Strickland saved at least the easy basket at the other end. Barry throws it away. Let's see if they force it in again this time. Take the outside shot. You got it. I'm out. 11 minutes and 54 seconds remaining at the Horizon in Rosemont, Illinois, just north of Chicago. A five-point St. John's lead. Alpha team, aggressor tank spotted. In a battle drill, you've got good guys and you've got bad guys. The hunter and the hunted. If you're gonna win, you need horsepower, firepower, people power. That's teamwork. Moving tank, direct front, 2,000.
this team uses a computer, Thermosat, laser rangefinder. The whole tank wins. The whole team wins. Not just one person. Find your future in the Army. This Saturday, Remington Steel moves to its new night. A brilliant plan. With more of the romance and mystery. Bottles of nine. Arriving Saturday. For 42 years, the man who ran the program at DePaul, graduate of Notre Dame, was the captain of the basketball team with the Irish. Now a member of the broadcasting crew for DePaul University, your friend Ray Meyer. Covers every game by radio. Keeps them busy, also writes some columns in local newspapers. Major Division I coaches, number five all time behind Rupp Allen, Iba and Diddle, Ray Meyer. Here comes the trap again that the Falls had trouble with. 17-12, DePaul trails St. John's by five with 11.45 left in the first half. Strickland inside. Rod Strickland, the freshman, has four. St. John's had him on the rope, turned the ball over two or three times. You can't let the Blue Demons come back here at the horizon. They're home. Basketball's a game of playing at home. Shelton Jones. Oh, my. 1914, Jones was six. Not a lot of movement away from the ball for DePaul. DePaul shooting seven for 11 from the floor. Just been the turnovers that have hurt them, and that's a foul holding Willie Glass, I think. It might have been on Jones. We'll wait. It'll be Shelton Jones. The St. John's Comet call number 30, Willie Glass. No, now they say Willie Glass. First on Glass. Five-point lead, St. John's approaching the midpoint of this first 20-minute period. Hamaji's with the left hand. Foul reaching in, Kevin Holmes. Hamaji's has such long arms. Watch how he spins to the left here and puts out those albatross wings. Batted around and controlled by Holmes. Good play. Tony Jackson stolen right back by Mark Jackson. Strickland was in the pie, and now the foul is on Holmes. Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson. Tony Jackson should have given a bounce pass to the left. It would have been an automatic two points on that fast break. Here's the hustle over here. Home style. It should have been a bounce pass to the left there to Holmes, and it would have been two points. 19-16, St. John's leading. Exactly 10 minutes left, first half. Bold on Shelton Jones, number 31. Now he has his first foul. Team fouls, five apiece. 31, Shelton Jones, I just get a funny feeling, Dick, and I feel games that the ball's going to be right in this ball game. Tony Jackson, not there. Oh, what a rebound by Willie Glass. Great leaper. Glass is only 6'5", but plays like he's 6'9". Ron Rowan. Rod Strickland takes it away from his own teammate. The ball with a chance to cut St. John's lead to one. Get it around the green. Nope. Homage. He has six. Now down by seven. The ball rallies to one with nine and a half minutes left, and the crowd now is in the game. And John has to shoot from the outside. That's right. Ron Rowan not there. Homage rebound. Keep it going. The numbers are good. The numbers are good. Not anymore. Back it up. 
Strickland. He's got it. And DePaul rallies to take the lead. Nine minutes left in the half. to take the lead. This world calls for good times. I live in Virginia. This world calls for share. Find a house in the brown. And this world calls for Boy, low and brown. Low and brown. The only beer brewed in a great beer drinking country. Brewed in New Brewed in England. Sweden. Canada. Japan. And here in America. For 600 years of Bavarian heritage in one smooth American beer. This world calls for good friends together. Low and brown. And Protecting what you value is the smartest policy. And your family's best protection comes from USF&G. For generations of Americans, protecting home, auto, and life has meant USF&G insurance. Just ask your independent agent. We actually cover America, covered from day to day. USF&G covers the USA. All the excitement of college basketball is here. Next Saturday at 1 Eastern, the Wolfpack of NC State takes on Oklahoma. Then at 3 Eastern, 12 Pacific, the LSU Tigers battle the Wildcats of Kentucky. Or DePaul meets UCLA. Plus West Coast regional action. College basketball. It's the stuff Saturdays are made of on NBC. Moving from campus and Alumni Hall six years ago, the first five years, 79 and 5 DePaul here in this facility, but only 9 and 4 this year. High zone around Walter Berry. Gonna have to hit from the outside, or at least shoot from the outside. St. John's had an 8 0 run. DePaul is currently on a 10 to 2. Great. Mark Jackson inside. Jackson for charging. I like the call. They're not attacking the ball zone properly. They're trying to force the ball into the troop. 2019, DePaul leads. They're hitting 67% of their shots from the floor. New face on D for Redmond, man to man. Watch Dallas to move low. Barry deflected it away, and then it hit the foot of Jackson out of bounds. Mark Jackson. In a man-to-man -man situation like this, it should get the ball down low to Dallas. <laughs> deflected out of bounds by Mark Jackson. Sloppy, sloppy ball play. St. John's had a chance to knock out the ball earlier in the game. It ended this game after eight minutes of play, but they got two chances. 17 to 10, you mean, and at that point? Yes, 17 to 10. They turned the ball over three times. Mark Jackson with a rebound of Comanche's miss. Inside to Barry. And uh, goal possession goes to St. John's. The old staying. See the arrow, like right? didn't see the Indians. That's the Milton Burrell saying about 25 years ago. Didn't see the Red Men. <laughs> Willie Glass. Did you see Barry set himself for that rebound? Tony Jackson, three on two. Strickland, all the way. Tony Jackson with a rebound. I'm telling you, Dick, St. John's has now got their work cut out today. And that's a 12-2 run for DePaul. Rowan in heavy traffic, hit by Barry, finally rebounded by Little Strickland. From the Bronx, New York, Strickland, good pass, Comanches, oh my! Boy, you're right, Coach, you sense this one. That's a 14-2 run now for DePaul. And they've been hurting bad. They need a good win to stay alive for the NCAA. This could be it. But St. John's has a lot of pride. They're very confident when they play. They don't panic. That's been Louis' trademark. Shelton Jones not there. Nothing dropping for the Redmen. 
Strickland hurrying it down court. Oh, boy, that was some shot by the freshman. Wow. It was 1-17-10. St. John's, they've scored two points since, while DePaul has scored 16. This year, you'll apply your brakes over 50,000 times. And the more you stop, the more you'll need Midas. Because we back every brake repair we do with a nationwide guarantee on brake shoes and pads. If they should ever wear out, Midas will replace them free at over 1,400 locations for as long as you own your car. With such a good guarantee, why would you stop anyplace else? Trust the Midas Touch. Of all the beers in this world, there's only one brewed around the world in the great beer-drinking countries, Lohenbrau. Brewed in New York. Brewed in England. Sweden. Canada. Japan. And here in America. That's how you get 600 years of Bavarian heritage in one smooth American beer. No wonder this world calls for Lohenbrau. the Patriots in the Super Bowl. But are they the super team? The Patriots ambush the Dolphins. But are they the super team? The best of the AFC battles the best of the NFC. The Dodge Super Teams on NBC Sports World. You're gonna love our style. Watch Rod Strickland on this last basket. It looks as if he wants to pass right here and then he changes his mind and hits as the Blue Demons red hot and great camera work right to Louis Carnesecca, who called the immediate timeout. To win and lose a game, any part of the game, too many coaches sit on that timeout, end up bringing them back home with them. 65% shooting for DePaul, a team that's hitting 47% on the year. Barry misses everything. No advantage here for DePaul, but Comanches will gun anyway. They're hot. Rebound, Tony Jackson. DePaul leading by seven, 26-19. 6.15 left in the half. Green, rebound Holmes. Won't drop for DePaul. They had three chances. Mark Jackson off to Rowan. Rebound Comanche. St. John's getting only one shot per trip. Surprise in this game, Dick. These coaches calling timeouts. There's no more commercial timeouts left for this half. So any coach that wants to speak to his team and stop a run, they got to call another timeout. And you only get four timeouts in a television game per team. Terry Brock, number 10, a 6'9 sophomore, is in for St. John's. Give them more muscle underneath and a whistle. Louis put him in for the black and blue game, a lunch pail game underneath, pushing and jumping. The ball has been governing the board so far. Second foul on Walter Berry. Fouled out uh, the game earlier this week against Villanova. Only the second time all year St. that St. John's player has fouled out. Barry goes out and Sheldon Jones out briefly returns. We are now in the one and one. On the ball, 34, Kevin Holmes. Kevin Holmes from Cleveland High School in Los Angeles, California. In high school ball, he won the city championship. His teammate was Brett Saberhagen. He played the off-guard. Saberhagen here with the Kansas City Royals. He would be a senior in college now. That's how young Saberhagen is. Well, Holmes is an outstanding athlete. Not a super basketball player, good basketball player, but not super. Not a good free throw shooter. Holmes hitting only 47%, hits both, and that's the way things are going for DePaul. And the zone they got now becomes stronger. They've outscored St. John's 18 to 2. A turnover that goes right back to Shelton Jones. Two start freshman guards for the pull. St. John's has not scored in over six minutes. Jackson. Terry Cross, his first shot is short. Comanches collect. Strickland hustles it into the offensive end. 
Green left alone. Not close. Rebound Shelton Jones. Mark Jackson trying to end the drought. Hip. It's 28-21 to Paul. Six for Jackson. He's their coach on the court. He's the leader. Stop that drought. Four and a half minutes remain. I'd slide down, Tommy G's. He wants it. He's got it. As I said from the top, Dick, he has the rep of a Wolf to Berry. It's just that he hasn't performed with that consistency. I don't know if he comes every day to play. Tommy G's now with 10 to lead all scores. Jackson's got to put that shot up. Glass also. Willie Glass. Glass now with four. It's a seven-point lead for DePaul. 3.45 left in the half. Get to Dallas. Go uptown. Kevin Holmes. He must have heard me knock his basketball ability. I think he has six points already. He does. Replacing Marty Embry, Kevin Holmes with a half dozen. The ball hanging on to that nine-point advantage after trailing by seven early. Ron Rowan. Rowan now with four. He's due to start drilling them from outside. With that double stack down low again for the ball. Need to change the baseline. Where the ball hasn't seen many man-to-man -man defenses. Strickland misses. Sheldon Jones with a rebound. Glass has it knocked away. It goes to Rowan. And a foul. Comedies saying, what did I do? But it's one of those cases where there's contact and they had to call it on someone. Give Rowan credit for that. He gave a head and shoulder space and hesitated a second and forced Dallas to come into him. Rowan to the line to shoot two, and he has been outstanding all year. Nearly perfect, in fact. He is currently in the top ten in the nation from the line. He has missed only five times in 80 shots from that strike. Number five in the NCAA. Andy Lauchs, number 14, back in for DePaul, as is Marty Embry. <laughs> Foul before the shot. Elsewhere. Georgia and Kentucky battling our other NBC game and the Wildcats by two. And next Saturday we get Kentucky against LSU at Kentucky, Dick. UAB rallying. They were down by plenty at Michigan and now trail by just three against the Wolverines. Marty Embry. He, like so many of his teammates, a troublesome year at the line. Hitting only 55%. Lamone Lampley, the tallest Lou Damon at 6'11", goes in for Dallas Comagies. Comagies leaves with 10. Does Comagies have two fouls? I think he only yes. has one. He has two. two. Good move by Joey. Don't let him pick up his third foul in the last two minutes of the first half. Embry hits them both. deficit staring at only thrice beaten St. John's inside glass can't hit Strickland ahead to Tony Jackson oh he didn't come close oh Tony that was a prayer pull, pull up and take it back out around the horn again 
You got a seven-point lead with the ball under two minutes. Ooh, that's what Joey's saying to himself. Ooh. And then Embry picks up his third foul. They'll put Holmes back in, take Embry out of there, save him for the second half. Kevin Holmes back in as Embry goes out. Jim Valvano, one of the most entertaining of coaches in any sport, will be Al McGuire's guest at halftime. He could he could make a living as a comedian. If you don't laugh during this halftime, then there's something wrong with you. At least have a good hard smile. <laughs> Willie Glass connects his fifth point. 144 left, trying to cut DePaul's lead to five. sitting out a good chunk of this first half with two fouls. Put the trap on the ball, trying to turn the ball over. Don't have a lot of offensive power out there with the ball. They're trying to work the clock down, down to 25. Tony Jackson inside, blocked nicely by Glass, controlled by Bross. Mark Jackson off the roller. Oh, got a nice assist, but no basket. Mark Jackson got hit, but a foul. Tony Jackson. They're not related. Louis Karnaseka. 61 now in his 18th year at St. John's. You talk about a surprising year for Karnaseka. He's been a surprise all his life. Well, a great coach. St. Anne's Academy High School. We went there, also coached there. Now they call it Archbishop Malloy. Mark Jackson connects, and it's 34-30. Well, make... Barry's been down for about seven minutes. You make the foul shot, you can stay in the ball game. The problem right now is the ball has no offensive power out there. Maybe the exception would be Tony Jackson and Strickland, but uh, they're soft. They're really looking to work the clock down. They're going to end up blowing a 7-9 point lead. It's down to three now. They're up by nine. We approach to the final minute of this first half. Tony Jackson inside. He's about the only guy you can count on to score with that group out there. That's the countdown clock. That's not the shot clock you're watching there. Shot clock is about nine seconds in front of the game clock. Willie Glass and a reach-in foul on Holmes, his second. At the line, Willie Glass. He used to practice, I know it was a trick that he used to use as a coach, too, with a bottle cap taped to the palm of his hand to tell him to tee, uh, shoot off his fingertips. Get the ball more up on the fingers. The great competitor. Holmes with the rebound, a rare miss by St. John's from the line, so with a five-point lead, DePaul does not have to hurry. The shot clock is off. Yeah, that's the countdown of the game clock you're watching now. Try to get the ball to Jackson. Lampley with three seconds left. 6-11, Lamone Lampley hits from the corner. And DePaul enjoys a seven-point lead going to the locker room. So St. John's roared out to a seven-point lead, looked in total command. by Lampley, indicative of their comeback play. The Demons by seven at the intermission. Sure you're smiling now, because I'm going to buy insurance for Metropolitan. But where will you be if I need you? Can I trust an insurance representative with floppy ears? I know. Met promises to pay claims promptly. If this doesn't work, watch out. Ah! <laughs> 
All right, Matt. You made your point. Get Matt. It pays. Muzzler. The muffler with aluminized steel, designed to resist rusting, Muzzler. and a limited lifetime warranty for as long as you own your car. Sears Muzzler Muffler. One more way we install confidence at Sears. Every day, Sears Muzzler Muffler, with Sears limited lifetime warranty, is just $19.99, including installation. There's more for your life at Sears. The more things cost, the better they are. That's not always true. Consider Barbasol. Barbasol has as thick and rich a lather as any other leading foam, but Barbasol can cost half as much as the higher-priced foam. Consider also Barbasol Glide Stick Deodorant. It has a fresh, clean scent like any deodorant should. But Barbasol can cost as much as a dollar less than the high-priced sticks. Barbasol Shave Cream and Barbasol Glide Stick. Great toiletries for a lot less money. DePaul had an 18 to 2 run against St. John's as the Redmen were uh, really in a drought uh, for about six minutes did not score Al McGuire and yet here's a DePaul team leading uh, the six best in the country by uh, seven at the intermission. Well what happens you can't give athletes in any college a chance to come back. St. John's they could have blown them out. They had them 17 to 10. They go down they get fancy and turn the ball over three times. All of a sudden the crowd and DePaul got hot. Now St. John's is in a fight. I think it's going to go right down to the wire, and I would think that the Paul would win. The second coming of Al McGuire <laughs> is the topic of Al's halftime feature. We'll be back after these words from your local station. Could a simple accident turn a deadly game into a terrifying reality? Contact. It's coming. I can feel it. Could a strange mistake force the crew into a terrible decision? You're not getting me up there! Could a fatal error start World War III? David Soule, Robert Conrad, and Sam Waterston. Fire. The fate of the world depends on the fifth missile tomorrow. City Desk celebrates its 34th anniversary from Washington with Senator Paul Simon. That's Sunday at 11 on Channel 5. It has been called the ultimate flying machine. It travels at twice the speed of sound. Which is why it has to be stopped by a computerized anti-skid braking system. The same sort of ABS braking system you'll find in only one line of cars. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. If you run a growing business, it can be hard to get the kind of attention you deserve from your bank. You see, at most banks, the business department is just one of many departments. But there's a big difference between a bank with a business department and a bank that's all business. Business department, please. Sir, we're all business. In Chicago, there's only one bank for business, all business, nothing but business, American National. Don't miss Sunday morning at 10.30, evenings at 11.45 on Channel 5. Al McGuire's Hoops. Brought to you by Miller Beer. Miller made the American way since 1855. Well, it's almost like an inside cover of a sports magazine coming to life. Now leave Al that alone, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it takes an entrepreneur to know one. And you certainly had a lot of extracurricular things going at Marquette. Well, I did a lot of camps and TV shows and radio shows, but in today's world, some of the Division I coaches, the first 30 or 35, make anywhere between a quarter of a million dollars and $400,000. No, wait a minute. How much would they make uh, just from the school itself for their coaching responsibilities? I say a coach get paid dicks anywhere between... $50,000 and seventy-five dollars to $80,000 a year. So you're saying there's another $300,000 in a pot somewhere? Oh, yes. Between their camps, their TV, their radio shows, their columns, their towels, their, their clinic appearances, their cookbooks, and their shoe contracts, and on and on and on. Coach, what 
is JTV Enterprises. It's a little corporation that I've always... I wanted to hang a shingle someday that said that's where, where V uh, runs the type of things he'd like to do. In fact, we even have a corporate logo, which is uh, a, uh, uh, a rainbow, because that's what I think life is. But it goes through a cloud, because we've got a lot of clouds. And it's, and it's, <laughs> that's a bright cloud. And, well, that's right, and it shares the vision. Jim, how many products and how many programs inside your enterprises? We do things like this. I, I gave some talks and decided we'd make a little film of it. Called, Cassettes? Uh, yes, Cutting the Nets Down. This was uh, after we won the national championship. And uh, just to try and share. I mean, to be honest with you, Al, I really don't tell people in business how to do their job. I wouldn't be that presumptuous. What I try to do is tell them how we do our job in one of the most competitive fields there is, and that's uh, college basketball coach. So we have films, we have cassettes, but then we branch out. We do things like I have cookbooks. Hey, I'm down south. How much Italian food's down here? So, you know, call up my mother. Call up my mother. I said, hey, Ange. I said, how about you get me about 300 Italian recipes? All right, she put it all. She did the whole book herself. I put my picture on it. I cut a 5%. You know, but uh, what does she know? She, Dear lives, mother. she lives in New York. Well, that's my mother. If it wasn't my mother, she'd had two, two and a half. You know, and uh, she lives in New York, so I tell the checks are in the mail. We do things like that. Plus, we every once in a while, I think ideas which come up just from uh, being in sports. Well, who, who conducts these ideas for you? Well, I have uh, Don Shea, who uh, is the, what I keep giving him is titles. No more money. He now <laughs> is the, he started out as just an assistant to the chairman of the board, president. He is now an executive vice president in charge of operations and also the assistant chairman of the board. But uh, no money. Oh, no, no. Never give money. <laughs> give plaque. Working with Jim, and I've been associated with him for a couple of years, uh, Alan, and we are a smorgasbord of business opportunities, uh, but basically, if I had to nail it down, the bottom line for us is radio and television sales, and obviously with Jim, we got a tremendous property, and uh, we are in the state of North Carolina. We embrace 50 radio stations that carry Jim's uh, uh, t uh, daily show as well as his Monday evening talk shows. We do things like this. For example, you go through... Uh, interviews now that the, the ladies are allowed in the locker room and you have all those uh, big guys running around and and what should they wear and i i used to watch i'd say you know they should have something a little nicer so we came up with these wraparounds with the players uh when they come down the locker room we tell them immediately to put this on and it's got their How's name it on it I don't know what, and I don't know what uh, we have uh picture this can you you you're with me you with me and you come out of the shower and you just instead of that little towel they give you another you know, little postage stamp one <laughs> as you come out you got your name on it this is all because of woman reporters? All because of the I love the women. The women have come, make you come up with all these great ideas. And these state uh, colors, state colors, your school colors, your family crest. Give me a call. Okay, let me see the guy that runs this call. operation, will you? I have one that says Al McGuire on I can give you a dozen of those. And it doesn't end there for the industrious, effervescent Mr. V. Now he's going to be athletic director, too. I don't think he should be athletic director. Why is that? Well, I think athletic director, with Jim's type of personality, he's like a free person, a free wheel, or a flower child. I think that in the meetings, academic meetings, too many guys smoke pipes. And when you ask them a question, Dick, they always repeat the question, then they say, that's a good question. By the time Jimmy ends up two meetings as athletic director, he'll quit. Believe me, he'll quit. And also, he'll hurt his cookbook sales, I guarantee. These guys came in here, wanted to buy us out. A record place, like the rest of the block. This guy's been in our family for 70 years, so we said, go ahead, build your building. But build it around us. There's still a place where some things are not the same. Where beer is beer, and the brand is Miller. So Miller's made the American way. Miller contains no additives or preservatives. Purity you can see, quality you can taste. All right, Bill McAfee back now in New York. We're getting set for the second half, but quickly, we want to update you on other college basketball today, beginning with that big upset down in Florida, where Florida State, who had won only one conference game all year, beat number four Memphis State 82-80. to And earlier here on NBC, some of you saw number 16 Louisville come back strong in the second half and beat the University of Houston 76-59. to Houston stayed close in large part because of their fine guard, Alvin Franklin, with a the steal there. Houston led by two at the half. But Denny Crum is a fine freshman player in Purvis Ellison, and he can play some defense. Two block shots there, and Denny Crum knew the Cardinals were taking control. Ellison had 25 points in the game, and he'll get a jam right here. Louisville wins going away over Houston, 76-59. to 
Also today, eighth-ranked Michigan has just beaten Alabama Birmingham, 62 to 54, and number seven Kentucky leads Georgia at the half by a score of 38 to 35. We are set now for the second half. Let's send you back to the Windy City. 38-31 as we get ready for the second half here at the Rosemont Horizon. Jim Valvano will see in person tomorrow uh, at halftime and uh, pre and post as North Carolina State hosts North Carolina. The Tar Heels surprised by Maryland earlier this week. Now the controversy is at Duke or North Carolina that will be number one next week. Well, I think next week that will be decided at Duke Sunday, the game we have, Dick. But this, tomorrow's game is a very difficult game for the Tar Heels, North Carolina. I think one of the arenas that favor the home team more than any other arena in the country happens to be where North Carolina State plays. And North Carolina State has the physicalness to match up against North Carolina. Their only problem, they can't match up in the guard position. So I look for Smith and Hale to take off. This is speech for, can I ask another question? Oh, we're out of time again. How does that go? Well, yeah, the, the, both teams are back on the court. DePaul leading by seven at the intermission. First, these words from your local station. Tonight on the Golden Girls, private lesson. He said the only way I would get an eight if I sleep with him. Get it for writing. And on 227. Yo. Sandra's new boyfriend's a lean, mean machine. He's my little code name. Then Remington's moving to its new night. A brilliant plan. With more romance and mystery. Boggles the mind. Be there tonight. City Desk celebrates its 34th anniversary from Washington with Senator Paul Simon. That's Sunday at 11 on Channel 5. Northwest Orient scores again for you with a free travel program no major U.S. airline can beat. 20,000 miles. No one gives you the U.S., including Alaska, so fast. 40,000. No one flies you free faster to Europe. And after 60,000 miles, no one but Northwest Orient flies you to the Orient free. So who beats Northwest Orient's free flight plan? People who know the score on free travel go Northwest Orient. More and more corn growers are switching to eradicane herbicide. Not for problem grasses, they're using eradicane on annual grasses in place of dual or lasso. Listen. I switched and saved. Eradicane gave me better control for $13.20 an acre. Yeah, I switched and saved. Eradicane cost me about $11 an acre. It's a fact. At annual grass rates, eradicane can save you $2, $3, even more on every acre. Can you switch and save? See your dealer. This is WMAQ-TV, Chicago. College basketball is brought to you by Michelob Light. Super premium taste in a less filling beer. Who says you can't have it all? By Honda, who invites you to see the Civic Hatchback at your local Honda dealer. By Kemper and the independent insurance agents who represent us. For all your insurance needs, ride with Kemper. And by the U.S. Navy. The Navy is not just a job, it's an adventure. Who says you can't have 100% imported hops and a less filling beer? Old world aging and a less filling beer. Smooth, super premium taste and a less filling beer. Michelob Light, the best of both worlds. Michelob Light, oh yes you can. Have it all. The great thermostat war. The battle that goes on the moment the temperature goes down. Certainty fiberglass insulation can help defend your home against little family feuds and not so little energy bills. So get plenty of Certainty fiberglass insulation and bundle up your attic right now. You can also get a free gift, like a telephone, a headphone radio, or a fuel and tool kit. This winter, bundle up with Certainty and call a truce of the thermostat. The Kemper Cavalry. Why do so many people trust their auto and home insurance to Kemper? First accident, forgiveness. Kemper Total. Repair or replacement value coverage for my new car, as long as I own it. Guaranteed renewal for good drivers 55 and over. Compare Kemper's loyal protection with anyone. We don't have to toot our own horn. Once you compare Kemper, you'll ride with us. 
All the excitement of college basketball is here when the Tar Heels of North Carolina battle NC State. College basketball, it's the stuff Sundays are made of on NBC. The official first half statistics were down at the bottom there. You see turnovers, eight apiece, and rebounds, 16 apiece. So what catches your eye, Coach? Well, obviously, 54% from the field for what DePaul has been doing, that is completely outstanding. And four from four from the foul line, they've been only averaging 60%. Mark Jackson, the playmaking guard for St. John's, leading the way with Walter Berry saddled with two early fouls, scoring only five, and that's certainly a big factor in the play first 20 minutes. While DePaul counted with Dallas Comagies inside with 10, and Strickland chipping in with eight homes with six. Embry has three fouls. DePaul starts with the ball initially, same team that started the game for the Demons, Strickland, well, with one exception, they say with Tony Jackson instead of Lauk, and Comagies comes out with a score, and he is fouled. That play was called during halftime, with double stack low, and Joey said the arrow's pointing all the way, we get the ball in the second half, let's kick it right away into Dallas. Not only two points for Comagies, but the third foul on Walter Berry. That will force St. John's into a zone to protect Walter Berry on defense. Comagies makes the free throw. It'll be DePaul's biggest lead. Ten-point advantage. So a three-pointer, 11 seconds into the second half for DePaul. Reach-in foul on Tony Jackson, his second. Let's watch Walter Berry now playing with three fouls and a key obviously to this offense for St. John scoring but five the first half. Well wherever he goes two men are picking him up in the back of that two three zone. There's Berry. Gets a time roll, Walter Berry, 33, seven for Berry. I don't think Berry will get credit with that basket pick. I thought Glass touched that. We'll see what happens. Inside, all alone is Terrence Green. No one picked up Green. St. John's is fast asleep. They must think they're playing against Patsy. Inside, Berry. Field goal, Walter Berry. Walter the Truth Berry. Cuts the lead to eight. They get the ball to him in that position the second half, and... Uh, That's curtains. Sweet the comedies if they can. Walter Berry is on Kevin Holmes, so there's less of a scoring threat. And Comagies. Shelton Jones is on Comagies. Strickland draws Mark Jackson. And Green uh, with Willie Gre uh, Glass defending. Holmes over Barry. Kevin Holmes. Kevin Holmes having the offensive game of his career, at least of his senior year. Eight points for him. Two minutes into the half. A 10-point lead for DePaul. Turned over, Terrence Green. I get the ball into home before Walter Perry has three fouls. Look at that DePaul bench. They're on their feet. Strickland. Perry with a one-hand rebound. Jackson dishing off the Berry. Field goal, Walter He has Berry. six points in a hurry in this second half. 11 in the game. Ball, every member to get the ball to Dallas. Strickland got too far underneath, and Willie Glass, does he control? Last touch by Glass. Good hustle by Rod Strickland. Watch Walter get the feed off from Mr. Jackson. Right there, excellent. 
Yeah, that's why Mark Jackson, unselfish play, leads the nation in assists. DePaul leading sixth rank St. John's. Redmond have lost only three all year. DePaul battling to try to get into the NCAA tournament. Off the hands of Holmes, out of bounds to St. John's. He's everywhere. <laughs> they took 15 years off my face somewhere or other. All right, compliments on your haircut. Rebound Holmes, 6'10 high jumper in high school. Reach in on Willie Glass. Second. Now one of the problems, although they shot four for four from the line and they're five for five in the game for DePaul, is that in a close game coming down to the wire, they get in trouble with a lead and when they are fouled, unable to make that one and one. We'll see if that's a factor today. Tony Jackson with a rebound. Perry. Boy, does Flash really go up high. Perry finally saved it for St. John's. Chance to whittle the lead to six on this trip. And there it is. Easy vote for Perry. Hey, Dallas, you got to play a little deep, pal. If you score a thousand down this end, you give up a thousand and two, you lose the game. I get into Dallas, he'll do his thing down this end. He's great, he's kicking into him. There you are. There's Kamachis. Rebound, Shelton Jones. Rowan beats everyone down court. Last with a rebound stolen by Holmes. Barry gets it back. Shelton Jones, and suddenly that 10-point lead is only four, 45-41, and Joey Myers spends a timeout. Forty-five, forty-one, DePaul. Who says you can't have it all? Who says you can't love your work and change your face? With super creamy old taste Michelob Light Oh yes you can Michelob Light Oh yes you can Super premium taste and a less filling beer Michelob Light Oh yes you can Have it all Almost a billion dollars every week That's how much America spends on foreign oil Just about a billion dollars every week to help control the cost of energy imports, we use energy efficiently. And we use our country's own energy resources, like electricity from coal and nuclear energy. Coal and nuclear energy are made in America. Coal and nuclear energy are homegrown. Norman, it's late. I can't sleep. The office automation revolution is passing us by. At two in the morning? Technology never sleeps, Doris. I'll call Harris. Who's Harris, Norman? I'm Norman. Harris is the big high technology company. Office networks, computers, phone systems. You're hyperventilating. Satellite communications. They'll grow at my business. I'll be a mogul. Come to bed. But my empire, my dream. My sleep. For your information, our name is Harris. If you've ever dreamed the dream of a champion, now your sports fantasy may come true on NBC Sports World. If you've ever dreamed the dream of a champion, now your sports fantasy may come true on NBC Sports World. While you were away for a snack, a couple of substitutions, John Hempel in for St. John's, and Marty Embry returns... For DePaul, six unanswered points scored by the Redmen of St. John's to cut DePaul's lead to four. Battling inside, and the foul is on Rowan for holding Tony Jackson. Second on Rowan. Redmen foul number 12, Brian Rowan, 
percentage in the second half. Walter Berry, four for four, close in. St. John's a 71% shooting uh, chart in the second half. An important time uh, down court for DePaul. Kick the ball back inside again. Playing man to man, St. John. Strickland behind Embry. And the foul will be on Strickland. His first. Fine looking freshman, 6'3. Went to Oak Hill Academy in Virginia, where his high school teammate was Michael Jones. Freshman now at Auburn after playing in the city his first three years. Embry covering Barry now, so Embry will put some meat on him, some flesh on him. There's that matchup. Shelton Jones over Comedy's rebound Embry. Strickland brings it in. Get off! And a mismatch here, Hempel covering Green. I'd clear out, let Green take him one on one. Comedy's around Jones. Rebound to Hempel. Hempel's a unique athlete. He is the body of a baseline player and can shoot from the outside. Barry, there's one of his patented. I don't know what I'm doing, but I get it in the hole, shot. That's a fly baby hook. 45 43. Eight straight points by St. John's. 15 now for Barry. Four forgotten the way they got the lead. Got to get it to Comedy. Tony Jackson not there. Follows his own shot. Good play. Jackson was six. Six and a half minutes gone. Second half. Get it to the man. There it is. And it's 47-45. Eight for him. Green made a mistake, the pressure mistake. He's got a boxing out row, and he went for the rebound. There's a trap. Two-point lead for DePaul and the ball. 12-45 left in the half. Strickland off to Jackson. Foul on him. Strickland to the line. Hempel's an explosive ball player, Dick. He's a transfer out of University of Mass, but he's a scorer. In fact, uh, he, uh, as a freshman there, left the University of Mass. In fact, set a freshman record average 16 points a game. Tony Jackson from the Bay Area played his high school ball at Oakland's Bishop O'Dowd High School. Solid student, uh, Tony Jackson. He was accepted at Stanford University and decided to migrate here to Chicago. Unbelievable, they're shooting 100%. 49 45 to Paul. 12 41 left in the second half. Seven straight free throws made by DePaul, a team shooting only 60% on the year. Getting position, but he got a little more body on him with Holmes. Ron Rowan. Rebound. Lamone Lampley. The ball has that tall team in there now. Holmes hits the underside of the rim. Barry the other way. Look at the big guy handle the ball. Mark Jackson. Why swatted by Lampley? The foul is on Holmes. Judging from Embry's expression, his fourth. Louis wants a goaltending. Hey, no I don't way, think no that way. ball is on the way down, Louis. Now Joey Meyer also on his feet looking for a substitute. Comedy will come back in. Let's see if Louis's right. Nah, looks like that ball is right around the line. Apex. <laughs> Kamachis is back in. Embry with four fouls goes out. Mark Jackson at the line for Louis Karnaseka. Set 
his parents wanted him to be uh, MD and play the accordion. He said, I wound up playing the clarinet and becoming a coach. Well, he's been the most pleasant surprise to St. John. Because most of the year last year, Moses started. But he brings more to the table. He brings uh, offensive scoring, unbelievable in assists, and he punches the ball inside. Plus, he's good on the board. Averaging 11 points a game, 75% free throw shooter, and leading the NCAA in assists. Hit those two cleanly, and it's a back to a two-point game with 12 minutes left. With St. John's Redman, the whole five guys do an excellent job rebounding. On to a tight little zone here. This is the defense that is bothered DePaul all season because they don't have one really good outside shooter. Strickland takes it inside. Ten for the freshman Strickland. And the year of the guard. Boy, all the way through from the seniors to the freshmen. Get it around to John over here. Let it go, number 33. Temple, let it go that time. Here it goes. He can hit those. A little long on that one, and skying is Comagies for the rebound. Now, the ball does not have an outside shooting team in there now. Jackson can hit from the outside. Comagies can hit from anywhere. Comagies misses, but he was pushed by Shelton Jones. Second on Jones. Through the perspective of Ray Meyer, as he looks at his son Joey. Now you had a son play for you. Got a, Ray Meyer's son Joey played here at DePaul, scored over a thousand points. Now he's broadcasting games of his son. That's got to be really a tough relationship. Well, their, their family is so close and they are so basketball oriented that I uh, I think it works with dad and son here. He's the eighth leading scorer at DePaul. Tenth now. Tenth of passing. Thomas Hees hits a deuce. Nine for nine from the line. DePaul, and they hang on to a six-point lead. Eleven minutes left. just a job, it's an adventure. You take your wits in business, so you'd like some guarantees. And one thing you can count on is USFNG. Protecting small businesses from big risks is our business at USFNG Insurance. Ask your independent agent. We got you covered, America. We're making your hard work pay. All the excitement of college basketball is here. Next Saturday at 1 Eastern, the Wolfpack of NC State takes on Oklahoma. Then at 3 Eastern, 12 Pacific, the LSU Tigers battle the Wildcats of Kentucky. Or DePaul meets UCLA. Plus West Coast regional action. College basketball. It's the stuff Saturdays are made of on NBC. With 11 minutes left, DePaul desperate for a big victory and this certainly would represent one as they try to impress those who will decide on the final 64 for the NCAA tournament. DePaul has this game with six ranked St. John's and they have three others at UCLA on NBC next weekend Marquette and Notre Dame so the four tough games and you feel if they win three of the four they should get in the NCAA. Yeah, that would give them a 17-11 record for the season. They do play a tough schedule. They play an awful lot on national TV. I think they play three for CBS and two for NBC. Plus, they have that Catholic conference. They play a doubleheader around Robin in with Dayton, Marquette, and Notre Dame. Okay, zone by DePaul, 2-3. Six-point lead, 10.45 left. Jones has to go off his foot, but Lampley fouled him. On Lamone Lampley. Well, uh, a bit later, you're going to tell us who you feel would be DePaul's 
starting five from the last ten years, the five you like best. I know you have Tyrone Corbin on that team. Oh, you know how to hurt Dick. You know how to hurt <laughs> Lampley saves it beautifully to Strickland. Nice move. He doesn't get the basket, but draws the foul. Excellent 360. I want you people at home to write down the five ball plays you think for the outstanding five, five position of the ball in the last ten years. Here comes the 360 as he penetrates in, does a complete twist, possible three-point, toys around and comes out. Hempel committing the foul is second. The personal 33, John Hempel is... 60% that is really down at the bottom when you consider free throw shooting, and yet they're 1,000 today, 9 for 9, 10 for 10. Is this like the measles? You know, how a team makes foul shots and misses them, it's all according to what the guy in front of you did. Now, here's a team shooting 60% and has 10 for 10 to it. Yes. And the big game for them, the must game for them to win. There's the first miss. Seven-point lead, 10 and a half minutes left. Marco Baldi, 6'11 freshman, is in for St. John's, number 14. He's replaced Shelton Jones. him. He fills up some space. Rowan. Foul is on Willie Glass for pushing his third. Came on Holmes' is back. St. John's. Watch, watch Glass get the elevator. Just athletic ability. We are now in the one and one. The ball has committed four team fouls. That's the seventh on St. John's. And Kevin Holmes at the line. He is two for two today, right at his season average. He's not hit 50% on the year from the line. Caught now because it's the front end of a one and one. He's 27 for 57 on the year, and he's three for three today. And we just say that to underline the fact it's been a terrible disease for the Blue Demons. They just haven't been able to hit from the line. Maybe this is the, the changing of the guard. When do we get down to prime time? Under four minutes becomes prime time. What a rebound by Lampley. He misses the jumper, gets it back. Kevin Holmes converts Lampley's miss. And it's a 10-point lead again for DePaul. And St. John's knows they've got a serious opponent on their hands. Walter Berry time. There, good move. Set up, go to a double stack, kick the ball in the comedy. They're on their feet, and the stands are on their feet on the DePaul bench. In the home. The biggest lead of the game for DePaul. The book on Holmes is no offense. Some no offense today. Wow. 13 points for Kevin Holmes. Louis Carnesecca calls time. They love it here at the Rosemont Horizon to fall by a dozen. The Honda Civic Hatchback. Fall in love without paying the price. Who says you can't have it all? Who says you can't love your work and the change of pay? Who says you can't have light beer with super premium taste? Make a love light. Oh, yes, you can. Make a love light. Oh, yes, you can. Super premium taste. And a less beer. Make a little light, oh yes, you can. Have it all. Look, with a former co captain of the St. John's Redmen in 1950 and 51, when you used to shoot the lights out, eight points a game. <laughs> but it's interesting, while well, there certainly isn't any St. John's blood in you, I think you love Ray Meyer and DePaul as much as anyone. 
Well, St. John's has uh, been very good to me. I think I do root for St. John's, but it's subconsciously. And through the years, being so close to the ball, when I coached at Marquette, we played the ball twice a year. So I came down to their confessional box, and they came up to our place. So I played against Ray Meyer 26 ball games. All right, 12-point lead now. Check that, a 10-point lead. Yes, it is 12. 59-47 is St. John's. Well, has seen uh, DePaul score 10 consecutive points. Well, they got to get to Walter Berry now. No matter how they force it into him, they got to get it to him. Good defense. Willie Glass can't hit. Rebound, Tony Jackson. He's done a good job on the board. Don't forget, Dick, Ray Meyer called Tony Jackson the best athlete he ever recruited. But he hasn't shown him over the four years. He's having a big game today. 8.50 left. That's some statement for a coach that coached for 42 years at multiple All-Americans. Lampley, rebound to Glass. Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson, who led the team at halftime, now has 11, his first buck of the second half. You notice that time they wouldn't let Walter go. That's how come Jackson went all the way in. They kept two men on Walter Berry, even during the fast break. Jackson, he's got Rowan. And the foul on, Ro on Tony Jackson. Third foul on Tony Jackson. Good call. He was going for the ball. He did it intentionally. Two shot foul. For the rest of number 12, Ron Rowan will have two shots. Rowan at the line with eight points in the game. Give you an idea what a great job he's done replacing Chris Mullen. He's been in double figures 26 times this year. And never misses the foul shot. Well, he's missed a, a total of seven all year, over 80 chances. He's never going to miss another one. It's those two. 59, 51 for the rest of his life. They're coming back at you, Blue Demons. Need a basket. Stolen by Barry. Knocked back away by Lampley. Lampley's done a good job off the bench. Amajee. for Dallas Comagees to lay the demons. Kicked out of bounds by Kevin Holmes. I am an eagle. I live in a high country in rocky cathedrals that reach to the sky. Go, eagle! Denver. There's that with the Ken playbook. Blocked by Lampley. Barry somehow oh. finds it and dishes it. Nice goal, Walker Barry. That would have brought oohs and ahs out of the black tops throughout New York. And he was behind the plane of the backboard, just kind of reached around and kissed it off the glass. 17 for Barry. He and Comagees each with 17. Got a final in. Marquette has defeated Dayton, 82 79. Big win for the Warriors. for home. Congratulations to Rick Majerus. Looks like they might get an NCAA bid. Tight little zone so Walter Perry doesn't see the ball. Well, they glass. Saves. Jackson setting up Willie Glass. Blocked by Lampley. He's become a force inside. Well, they wanted to red originally. Well, here's Barry before, but he's in the garbage basket, the one that needs coming into the weak side. What he does, he reaches and uses the basket as part of his defense. Steve Serena, number 40, is in for the first time today. He replaces Rowan. You know, when Lampley, Ray Meyer wanted to redshirt Lampley as a freshman, but he said no. He wanted to go straight four years. So he really would have just been a junior now. He could use that one extra year. Serena comes out the bell. Oh, a tough dummy by Walter Berry for 19. Six minutes left, an eight-point lead for DePaul. Walter makes it all look so easy. Yeah, many feel that uh, 
Johnny Dawkins at Duke and Barry at St. John's. It's a one-two for player of the year. Watch this tough dunk now. This is complete timing. He doesn't go over. We have a little technical problem with giving you the replay on Barry. Maybe we'll show it back to you later. Well, Glass is rested with four fouls. At 35, Dallas Amagee. Amagee is at the line. Amagee shooting 64%. That's three for three today. Well, we get to the prime time foul shooting. It's time for a little bit of choke, Barry. Got to make this one, Dallas. Keep the team confident. Move that lead up to nine. Push your... Got one of the top teams in the country. I think they're rated number six or seven. Six. Rebound Barry. And then he has it stolen. And a foul on Barry. Four on him. Absolute frustration on Barry that time. Tony Jackson kind of used a quick silver move. After Barry got the rebound, he relaxed the second. And the Tony Bennett of San Francisco just... Strip him the ball. Watch, he just stripped him of the ball there. Barry out of frustration. Jumps on him like he's a cowboy with a saddle on Jackson's back. So two starters, Willie Glass and Walter Berry for St. John's with four. And with that thin bench, Moody really has to use his cards wisely. That's a big shot by Jackson. He put it to double-digit numbers right here. Looking for his 10th point of the game, Tony Jackson. Louie might have to soon go to a pressing team to move in more guards to try to create turnovers. Back to a 10-point lead, DePaul, with 5.42 left. Jackson can't connect. Rebound, Kamaji. Stolen, Barry. Boy, Barry playing both ends. Mark Jackson. And gets the two, but it was Barry who kept it alive. Here comes some pressure up court, but the other four guys went down. You can't do it by yourself, Jackson. Go back and recruit. You have to go man to man. I get the ball into Lampley, try to get the fifth foul on Walter Barry. Hit him on the Pine City. Knocked out of bounds by Strickland. Number 12, Rob Rowan re-enters the lineup, replaces Joey Myers. He saw his team lose the ball at the other end, and Mark Jackson getting two. Well, he looks like a choir boy. He looks like an altar boy. It's awful hard to impress officials when you look that way. What are you going to do? Go out and buy a new face? Yeah, go out and get a couple punches in the ear. Get cauliflower ears. Marty Embry back in. Ron Rowan has returned for St. John's. Right. Lampley, I'd move in with, with uh, Barry. There he goes now. Get it to Lampley. All right, now go dribble towards him, Lampley. Six seconds. 67-57. 13 for Rod Strickland. Four and a half minutes remain. St. John's only lost three games. One to Duke. One to Boston College. And the other to Syracuse. One was in overtime. The other two was kind of quick hanging. They had the Syracuse one bit. Well, that was 84, 68, 64 at Syracuse. But remember, with about three seconds left, Willie Glass missed a layup that would have tied it. And then uh, Syracuse got a couple of free throws at the end of the game. Duke 71, 70 early and overtime losing to BC. So a win for DePaul today, no question, would be their biggest victory of the year. And they're four minutes away from celebrating. Long ago on the frontier, homeowner's insurance meant knowing the cavalry was close at hand. That kind of protection was hard to beat. It still is. Today, Kemper provides insurance to homeowners, condo owners, and renters with a wide range of money-saving discounts. And you can count on professional service from the independent agents who represent the Kemper Cavalry. To protect your homestead, compare Kemper. You ride with us. An hour from now, there'll be 50,000 fans here, eating, drinking, cheering, and groaning. Some of those fans will leave here not feeling so well. Whether it's heartburn, upset stomach, even diarrhea, they can all take one remarkable medicine for relief. Pepto-Bismol. As it copes, Pepto-Bismol relieves what's wrong, relieves it, 
then leaves the protective coating behind. Pepto-Bismol. For most common stomach discomforts, the one that coats is the only one you need. The Bears maul the Patriots in the Super Bowl. But are they the super team? The Patriots ambush the Dolphins. But are they the super team? The best of the AFC battles the best of the NFC. The Dodge Super Teams on NBC Sports World. You're going to love our style. Ten-point lead to Paul with 4.22 left. St. John's will play it in under their own basket. That was Kamachi's third foul. Sixteen foul. Inside goes Mark Jackson to score. And he was fouled, I believe, by Kamachi. We'll see. It was kind of a tickle foul. He couldn't get out of the way. He put his palms in and then took him out. That's four on him. He was trying to bury Kamachi inside a 2-3 zone so he wouldn't pick up the sports foul. Mark Jackson, he may be one of the more underrated players in the nation this year when you consider he's number one in the entire NCAA in assists averaging nine a game 248 coming in he's blistering all the St. John's records and he's just a handful away from becoming the career leader up goes the periscope take it down now looking for his 17th point 18 is his career high so this is a big game for him the goal step the torpedo he releases the torpedo bang he hit the ship 67-60 with 4.15 left. St. John's picking up the D, trying to create the T.O. Away from the ball. It's uh, Kamaji's, I believe. And if so, that'll be his fifth. Let's see. Maybe Sheldon Jones. They were in the elbow battle inside. It's the third on Sheldon Jones. Let's set up, Dick. There's four minutes left. The arrow is favoring St. John's. St. John's has no timeouts left. The ball has two. Both teams in the one and one. There's the free throws now starting to haunt DePaul. Yeah, they're now in prime time. 67-60. Walter Berry outside to hit. 67-62. Berry with 21 to match the number on his uniform. Too soon to pull up. St. John's putting a little more pressure. I think they go to traps now. Once you go over half court. But here we are. They've got one, three, one trap. Here it comes Glass. Uh, Jackson trapping. You got to put the ball up, the ball. Thomas inside. He has 19. 3-1 trap like that, underneath the basket's open. Ron Rowan setting up Shelton Jones. 69-64, Jones with 10. We have 3-0-8 left. Don't try to kill the clock now, it's too soon. St. John's getting more aggressive on his D. Off the leg of Lampley, and Lampley says he wants timeout. All right, here's where they got Lampley underneath the basket here. No, that's Thomas Heath, excuse me. He hung on the rim a little bit, but at home, you get away with that. Two minutes and 58 seconds remain. St. John's will have the ball when we return, trailing by five. Where you going, it's me, Cologne. This is it, opening night. Brian, party of two. You're on your way to the top. It was just great. No other beer is brewed and aged like exceptionally smooth Michelob. Table for two. Oh, that'll be about 45 minutes. <laughs> <sighs> we did it. Where you going, it's me. Presenting the Volkswagen GTI. Car and driver calls it one of the 10 best cars of 1986. What you say? Celebrate. Buy a new GTI by February 28th, and Volkswagen will give you back up to a full year's interest. Get the deal of the year on one of car and driver's 10 best cars of 1986. What you say? class of 71. He finished his career at DePaul with 1,233 points. Well, let's go back to that uh, 
your pick of the five best players for DePaul the last decade. There they are, Gary Garland, Clyde the Glide, Bradshaw on the backcourt, Dave Corzine at center, Terry Cummings, and Mark Aguirre. Well, I see now why you didn't put Tyrone Corbin on there. Pretty tough to knock Cummings and Aguirre off that list. Well, they, um, I like Clyde the Glide. He, he really run a show. Kenny Patterson was good for four years here. And Gary Garland, he just called him the music man, was an outstanding player. 69-64, DePaul. With just under three minutes remaining, St. John's with the ball. Look at that. Oh, 27 to 0. DePaul's bench outscoring St. John's. Kevin Holmes with 15 and Tony Jackson with 10 off the bench for the Blue Demons. DePaul has a real strong rebounding team out there. Knocked away by Tony Jackson and saved by Shelton Jones. 35 left. Plenty of time left. Mark Jackson, and that's his career high. 19 for Jackson. See what's happening, Dick. They will not leave Walter Berry, so Jackson can tend to break all the way in. Here comes the trap. Move up, Glass. Glass, move up. Rowan moves up. Jackson moves over. Foul by Mark Jackson. Two statistical factors come into play with 2.11 left. DePaul, one is their turnover rate, 18 a game, very high, and their free throw shooting, 60%, very low, despite the fact they were perfect earlier in the game, nine for nine. Anytime you can foul a freshman, no matter what he shoots, I'd foul him going down to the wire. Strickland is two for three today, and that was his 14th point. He has all the skills of a basketball player, and he has over three years to show him. And he's already scored more points than any freshman guard in DePaul history. Five-point game with 208-207 left. Don't see any panicking by the Redmen. It's your club. Rowan wanted it. He's got it. Field goal round Rowan. Now remember, St. John's has no timeouts. Normally in a situation like that, they'd call a timeout, set up a defense. You'll see the trap come as soon as the ball goes over half court. There it is. One minute, 48 seconds left. Three-point lead to Paul. A big, big game for the Demons trying to get in the tournament. St. John's trying to hold on to that number six rating in the country, having lost only three times. I wouldn't take this down too far. There's 24 seconds left. I wouldn't take it down too far. You take it down under 10 seconds, and these guys will put up a Hail Mary shot. You only got a three-point lead. You got to play. One minute and 20 seconds left. 11 on the shot clock. Strickland to Jackson. Good Saturday afternoon in the second city for Louis Tarnasek. Rebound Barry, 73-68, five-point deficit with 112 left. Mark Jackson. And it goes to St. John's. Arrow point towards St. John's. There's plenty of time left. You only got a five-point spread here. You shouldn't have an overtime because we're on the odd number. Boy, Joey Meyer showing how immensely important this game is to DePaul. In traffic, Jackson forced a bad shot. Tony Jackson at the other end. Strickland. And that should do it for DePaul with 55 seconds left. Rowan. Out of bounds to St. John's off Comagy. 47 seconds remain. No basket, the foul before the shot on Tony Jackson. His fourth. 
I wouldn't have reached in that time, Tony. You almost committed the moral sin of three-point play this time of the game. It's absolutely a no-no. Louis Carnesecca is came down by seven. Good move by Joey that time, taking Embry out, putting the ball handler in the green, trying to counter the pressure that St. John's going to put on him after these foul shots. Lampley rebounds. This one is history. Red men who go 20 Best paint you select will be perfect for your home and lifestyle. 